Hey guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. As we are going to be diving into the Naga Mnata Monks, the first time we've actually had a premium unit added to the game for quite a long time. So before we actually dive into the unit itself, because it is quite an interesting unit and it's actually quite good, I kind of just want to touch briefly what are mercenary units because some people won't know. So essentially, mercenary units are ones that are brought for silver or sovereigns. They're essentially sort of paid for units. You get basically this thing called the exemplar unit trait. They basically generate 10% extra hero, unit, XP, and 10% honor. So they're basically it's like a it's like a 10% extra premium account on top of, you know, if you already have a premium account on top of that. So you can see what I mean. It's just like it makes you slightly more productive per battle. They come fully leveled up, so when you buy these guys, they start off at level 20 and they have the veterancy line fully unlocked. So they're essentially a preset, predefined unit. Now, traditionally, I've never really had much of a problem with mercenary units, because if we go over and see where you find them, so you go over here onto the top, onto the mercenaries, off on the auxiliaries onto the mercenaries, and here is the mercenary unit tab. So I've owned previously all of them, and when they were first released, we just got the sea stag, the black dragons, um, the, you know, the javelineers, the pikemen, and the archers, and they are pretty much all horrible, including most specifically the death dealers. Easily the worst unit in the game. Couldn't hit a barn door from the inside. They they're truly awful. But I was fine with that. They're fine as little fill-in units. They're quite low leadership. You know, occasionally you get them. Then they introduced Martellatori. Okay, Martellatori. Obviously not much of a combat unit, but at 30 leadership, plus they get some siege tower pushing buffs, you know, it actually starts to become quite a nice additional unit to drop into your army. And I've probably played the Martellatory more than any other unit in my barracks, because they just always drop into that slot, and they're always giving those little buffs. But now for the first time they've added the Naginata Monks, and they're actually, at tier 3, quite a good unit. And it kind of opens up the question of, you know, should mercenary units like this really be good? Does it start to become a little bit pay to win? Uh, and I think we're starting to sort of touch that line or cross over it very slightly with this unit. Anyway, that's kind of my bit on the pay to win side of things. I don't want to tell everyone what to think, so it's kind of up to you, but I just kind of think we're venturing perhaps a little bit close to that line. So I'd be interested to see what you think about that in the comments. Anyway, that aside, let's push on with the unit. So... For me, they are an anti-hero unit, almost in their entirety. They do get really nice base damage. So they're hitting, and I have got quite a few good doctrines on them here, but I'm hitting at over 1,900, almost 2,000 slashing armor penetration. And that's why they do so much damage to enemy heroes, because they will overpower hero armor. And obviously at tier 3, you know, nothing really can stand up to that level of armor penetration. But they're combining that with a 1700 slashing damage, which just means they really can burst down enemy heroes and to some extent enemy units really quite effectively. They essentially have two abilities. They have a charge ability, standard charge, if they charge forwards and do like a, a running glaive leap, because essentially that's what they are equipped with, this sort of glaive style weapon here. They also have this running strikes, which basically means they stab rather than slash. So they flick over, I believe, at least is my understanding of it, when Winning Strikes is active, they flip over to piercing uh, damage, but they essentially get an anti-cavalry element. They do increase damage to cavalry and they cause a movement speed slowdown to that enemy cavalry unit when they're in this Running Strikes mode. There isn't necessarily that much cavalry at Tier 3, so it's kind of hard to really use it effectively. The only cavalry you're really going to be getting is Outriders, and they're normally either riding away from you and throwing javelins in your face, so... Again, not really all that much potential for anti-cavalry. I still don't think that's really where this unit's uh, skills lie. It's kind of in the anti-hero stuff that makes them nice. And that's really how I've been playing them. Put them up against a unit of Prefecture Guards, you're really not going to be holding up all that well. But if you can take out the enemy hero before we activate Storm Mode, then it starts to become a little bit more interesting. So to that end, I've kind of been... Uh, playing around a little bit with some of these doctrines, got a few nice things on, things like the unit damage doctrine, really upping their not only their damage to units, but it's giving them that 70 point sort of base slashing damage increase. We also got the hero damage doctrine, which is increasing not only damage to heroes, but their base armor penetration statistics. So that's helping get that slashing AP even higher. 
We've got my little random damage doctrine. I can never quite remember where I got this from. You can't get it anymore. It's from one of the challenges they did a couple of seasons ago. It's really nice because it gives you not only the health, but that base slashing damage increase. A Siege Fighter Doctrine, and of course, just because we want every little ounce of damage we can get, a little bit of increased slashing damage. Not really much for me to tell you on the veterancy line, since it's already pre-leveled and pre-selected, so it's almost irrelevant in this case. So anyway, let's hop into some battles. Let's see what this unit is all about. So here we go then, with our Nagadata monks, into a little battle on Reginopolis. So for me, this unit is all about the hero killing. They, they can kind of deal with units, but not really all that effectively. So I'm kind of trying to be careful with their charges. Anyway, sort of having a bit of a look around at B, but I noticed we've got a few enemies coming up through the very far hand siege tower and kind of having a bit of a look around there. So I thought uh, maybe there's a little bit of a little bit of an opportunity for a little bit of baiting to go on here. Come around the corner, uh, immediately get a chain dart and scimitar. I try and move myself back into the open so I can get a clear run. I'm calling my unit up, get the charge on. It's almost too late, immediately kills the first unit, and there goes the second guy. I think essentially he, he already died, but he used his escape animation at the same time as he died. And so, in the wonder that is Conqueror's Blade, he goes through a nice little bit of lag before he actually dies. <laughs> but essentially, that's my favourite way of using them. Double hero kill, flatten them really easily. They have a really sort of nice contact mechanic where they basically doesn't give heroes the time to roll out the way. Basically, as they make contact in their charge, it's almost like an insta-kill. Anyway, not got a lot of hit points, but as we come back round, the enemy's pushing on to B. I push down the stairs. A few of them manage to miss, but with Trebs coming in, we go for a slightly dodgy charge, but we get the charge in, and most of them make it down the stairs, into the sides of the enemy units there as well. Now, I immediately kill the enemy pike player. Same thing again. He basically just, his health went from full to zero in a few seconds. And you see, we do pick up 20 unit kills, you know, it's not as if this unit does badly against enemy units, it's just that they're a little bit fragile and they just don't seem to really do the sort of damage that something like a Prefecture Guard does against enemy units. In that sense, they're just a little bit lacking. So we get the unit out and I have to go and then basically send them back up to the supply point because, well, half of them are already dead. A little bit later on in the same fight though, pulling back down as the A point is starting to get pressured, and this guy just does not know what this unit is. I lock him in place. And yeah. <laughs> Poor guy just gets absolutely eviscerated. That's four hero kills. But you can kind of see here the problems with this unit. Even with the enemy hero dead, she have a fairly hard time against those prefecture guards. Next up, we go on to a little bit of Harbour City. And it's going to have a kind of a similar outcome. Good against heroes, but struggling a little bit against enemy units. I kind of decided it's wiser not to go up against that chain dart scimitar with enemy units turning up. So they've basically captured our supply point at the back, back side of our base. So I'm kind of flanking around looking for my opportunity to get in. Now the problem with this unit is because they're so fragile against range, particularly with all those knife throwers on the point, and because they're not that effective against enemy units, you know, really looking for the drop to get these hero hits. So that's why I'm just hanging back a little bit with the unit, waiting for my opportunity, kind of deciding when I'm going to want to go. You know, don't quite want to go there, but actually the enemy created the opportunity for me, come around the corner, and that's when I make my move. And he's dead. <laughs> Doing what it does best. And then as the team pushes in, buff the unit, get them in, and they're just in free attack now, basically, not doing anything specific. They do manage to grab themselves a second hero kill, because they do still hit really hard against enemy heroes. So you can still take them down, but obviously without the charge, they're certainly not as effective. That charge is kind of everything in this unit. As we go on a little bit of a little bit of a merry chase on this chain dart, and do manage to actually get the kill. This is kind of a little bit of a kill steal there, possibly. But anyway, kill securing, we'll go with that. So pulling the unit back up and kind of deciding really where we want to go next. Get the unit back over onto the supply point just to get those few little bits of heals back, because we basically lost nothing there. Grabbed ourselves two hero kills, a handful of unit kills. You know, that's really where this unit is excelling. Decide that I'm probably going to want to push back up sort of onto the main point, although going around the back way, try and see if we can catch some enemies out there, because really I love it when you can catch sort of heroes on their own in sort of isolated situations, kill the hero, and then you can kind of deal with the unit, unless it's Prefecture Guards in drill mode. But as we pull up, the enemy actually decide that they want to push basically back to exactly the same supply point that we were just on, and this is where you'll see I start to make a couple of misplays. So the enemy starts to push up there. Initially, I'm kind of interested. A couple of enemy heroes looking relatively isolated. Uh, it's kind of interesting. 
But actually, as enemy more units start to turn up, I'm less keen on a frontal fight with enemy units. I kind of have a look and decide, hmm, I'd rather not. So I pull away to the right, but actually the enemy takes that as the opportunity to engage. Good move on their part, so I have to turn and take that fight. We do get the full charge off into them and almost kill that Poleaxe. I try and lock him down, get in with the damage, but look, the Prefecture Guards have already completely killed my unit. And what, is a couple of seconds? And that's what I mean when I say these guys just don't really stack up against enemy units. We do manage to get a little bit of revenge on that mall and get the kill. But yeah, just not really holding up against enemy units in all that much way. And so that really sums up these monks, really. A really fun unit to play, particularly fun for basing out enemy heroes. That's, for me, where I have the most enjoyment with them. It struggles a little bit against units. It'll be interesting to see how they now play in at Tier 4. Obviously, this was recorded in Tier 3. Yes, we are extremely late in getting this video out. Apologies for that. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed it late nonetheless. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all on the next one.